So we open where we left off with Kiki and Tiffany arguing. Tisha gets up and holds Kiki's face. I don't want you getting her upset. Why? Let them brawl. So now Tiffany's saying, oh, well, I didn't have a bunch of siblings. I didn't have a big family. So then how would you know how they interact? And why are you speaking on it when you barely know them? Oh, that's right. Tiffany pregnant. I guess they shouldn't brawl. Stormy pops in and says, well, you had all these people saying it and then your cousin low-key validating it to me. That was more than enough. Fair. Stormy said, you should have shut me down and all I said was you said enough, which you did. So Mel's like, you know what? I'm going to let y'all hoot and holler and I'm going to leave. So Mel decides to let the girls know that this isn't... What girl, if you don't get off your Janet and say, look, I'm leaving because I think I'm better than you, which you do. Stormy said, no, I think this is good. We need to air it out. Mel said, well, if that's what you consider proper converse. Oh, my God. So you've morphed into boring heifer. Nice, nasty heifer. Two-faced heifer. Passive-aggressive heifer. Yawn-ass heifer. Okay, heifer. This ain't going to sell no records. They end that scene with Tiffany saying, we never got our massages because you didn't pay for none. This is a Carlos King production. Smaller budget than Mona Scott. That's why you're in Huntsville. Oh, God. Across town, Maurice goes to meet with Martel, and he gonna say, oh, you got your hoochie daddy shorts on. Mm-hmm. And you'd like to put your hand up in them. Oh, Jesus Christ, I've always been a gentleman. I always will be. You ain't no gentleman. You're a piece of shit. You're not eating, no, you're diarrhea. Oh, I can't stand Martel. Oh, Lord, now Marceau's here. I really didn't need to look at it that big of an ugly this late at night. So Martel's throwing a little shindig and Sheree's coming. Girl, this is Carlos throwing everything but the kitchen sink to keep his little show on the air. Oh, goodness, is Sheree the one? Of course not. No, 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 no. No, 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 of course not, cause your filming's in vain. Boom, 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 them Bravo checks ain't coming for Martel. So now we got Big Ugly meeting with his new business partner, and they saying, well, business-wise, we dating, and Reno, the new partner, says, yeah, well, we ain't gonna get married if you treat me like Teach." Because he actually thinks Tisha's an asset and should be sitting in if, if they want to run business like the big boys. And Marceau's like, well, I don't know if she knows my deepest thoughts in business. How long you been working with this heifer? Do you know her deepest thoughts? Do you care? So he's keeping his financial failures from her until the last possible moment. Oh, yeah, this is a great marriage. And you really want a business partner that ain't going to tell you the uncomfortable truth? Mm-hmm. He said, you better tell your wife what's going on. What if something happened to you? She'd be better off. So that gives Big Ugly a lot of food for thought. So Kimmy letting Tisha use Maurice's podcast room as an office because Lord knows we need Maurice's pontificate. So they go over the little spotty arguments. Oh, God, but now Kimmy done surprised us with Mel because it's time to move forward. You can't move forward with backward-ass heifers. Oh, Lord, so Mel coming into this meeting with her ass on her shoulders. I don't know if my dark soul has changed in four months. <laughs> well, Tish didn't ask for the meeting. This was at Kimmy's behest. So Melody wants to host a tea to teach people about etiquette. So they all agreed to get together and go to the Black Business Expo with Tisha because it's about the community. Y'all been doing this shit for six years. Come back, group my ass. And community my foot. Oh, God. Now we got Big Ugly explaining to Tisha how he thinks he's doing right by protecting her from the fact that they po. But we know that because y'all still in your rental home. Remember when you had to downsize three seasons ago? Pepperidge Farm remembers. And you still ain't built Scott Manor. Y'all taking longer than shit Ray Whitfield, who's now on your show. Marceau, you are a sorry husband and an ugly one. I don't see the benefit of being with you. Tisha's just so happy he's actually keeping her in the loop. She's like, this is growth. Yeah, he looks like a growth. Oh, Lord. 
So Marceau and Tisha are so broke, they got to bring back together the comeback group. Everybody's here with their best shit-eating grin on. Y'all don't fuck with each other. So this isn't the comeback group. It's just the comeback group coming back to not come back for the community. All word on the curb is Mel has a new boo. Marceau has a side baby and Kimmy like, uh-uh, this is some comeback crap, and what do you really want? They want your money. They're trying to book some gigs and get some butts in the seats at Black. They got to pay back that PPP, yeah, you know me. So the Black Business Expo is Tisha's event. I wonder if she got it trademarked. Let's get to some trailer reviews. Oh, and this was episode four. They misnumbered it, so nobody's DVRs recorded it. I wonder who has it out for Carlos King at all. He said it happened on all cable platforms. Happened on Philo too. Because I was like, did I miss episode four? No, you didn't. But let's check out the Equalizer with Denzel Washington. And I got the same energy for Denzel today that I had for Harrison yesterday. I, I, like, I'm not saying you can't be interesting over 70. I'm not. But you out here doing all of these acrobatics that people at 40 are struggling to do. I, I want to know how many 40-year-olds are jumping off buildings. I mean, we'll get out and run. We keep fit. We keep active. But we're not trying to do superhero stuff because our knees, we trying to keep them. Right now, I'm on knee preservation. I'm on knee watch. I don't have any knee issues, and I'm going to keep it that way. Let the young 20-year-olds run and bounce on their knees, them strong, cartilage-filled knees. I want to keep my cartilage. This is 40-year-old cartilage. This is, this is cartilage that you preserve. You only jump if necessary. Only run if being chased. Otherwise, we do no impact on the elliptical. We're smart with our cartilage. Also, at this age, you've mellowed. What did Blanca say in Pose? Age mellows a bitch. You ain't got all that fighting anger energy. But let's see what they doing. So we somewhere in Europe, because we always somewhere in Europe. Oh, we in racist Italy? Mm. Okay, you know what? Set it off. Set it off. So we see people done gotten killed. We walking through what looks like an old palace. I ain't mad at a dead racist. And now we see Denzel. And somebody got a gun on him like they gonna do something. Of course he's retired now looking for what? A vacation, an old daughter, what? And why you got this pastor hat on? Oh, he's fallen in love with the village and the village is falling in love with a black man in Italy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it is fiction. So there's an attack on his little Hamlet. It's the mafia. See, these movies is making these older people that are running the country think they can keep doing it. That's the problem. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You need to sit down. And so does he. But now we having a fight with the mob, shootouts, men in helmets, kicking in doors, the huge. Girl, I mean, Denzel, you ain't put enough money away for your retirement because this was kind of a stinker. And that's the trailer. Okay, let's check out the trailer for season three, The Kardashians. I just want to know, what are they going to show us at this point? We've seen you marry, divorce, have children. We've watched your shit. We've watched your shit. This is why I keep my business out the street, out the street. Y'all ain't seen me shit yet. So there's still a reason to tune in. Oh, maybe you'll shit. <laughs> I mean, you know. Ugh. Kim said, I don't know where we left off. Have you ever left off? We have known you since you was 16 working for Paris Hilton. Even she's given it a rest. We've watched you for 20 years freeze and pickle your face. You know, I ain't looking at this shit. I ain't looking at this shit. Let's look at the trailer for Maggie Moore's. So apparently two heifers named Maggie Moore have been murdered on the same day. Oh no, a week apart, not on the same day, but still. So one Maggie Moore, we've got a divorce. She was fighting with her husband, told him to get out. He said, it's my house. Yeah, if it's my house, I ain't leaving. 
he hires somebody to scare his wife from going to the popo. Oh my God, the guy has a sign. I am deaf and I have a gun. Effective. I dated a deaf guy. He was really cute. He was really cute. I, I should have stayed with him. I should have paid him more attention. I'm bad at that. So the guy accidentally kills his wife, the deaf guy with a gun. So now they've got to kill the other Maggie Moore to confuse everybody. Fortunately, there is only one Alexander Diane Rogers. Okay, this looks like a fun comedy meets whodunit. I'ma watch Maggie Moore, and I'ma see you soon. For traitors, since they put that on today, I was like, I meant to peep at it, so we gone peep.